So this is the content of the course. I want you to explain you a little bit on the structure, how I organize the course. And very important to tell you that I tried to be the most linear as I could, but there are plenty of processes which occur simultaneously. So for instance, if you're talking about, let's go to the polymerization unit. Well, with polymerization unit, you're taking advantage of the all the fins produced in the FCC. If you're talking about gas processing, well, you are going to obtain gases that are formed either in thermal cracking, in hydro cracking, catalytic reforming. So it's kind of hard to let gas processing to the last, but I try to include also this by type of cut. So as you can see here, these are light cuts until eventually they get heavier and heavier and heavier. Now, also another example, alkylation unit will require isobutan, which is obtained from the isomerization unit and vice versa. You're going to require, let's go here, catalytic reforming is going to be forming hydrogen. So you're also going to use hydrogen for hydro treatment. So make no worries. We're going to try to cover a brief overview on where are we? Very important to have this index. Whenever you have any doubt, remember where are we and where do we want to get? So this is the introduction. It's a little bit boring, but definitely worth it, especially if you are new to my courses. You are going to see how we structure most of the courses, some tips and general things about the course. If you want to go directly to the course, just go to section number two. We're going to start with the overview of the petroleum refinery. We're going to cover also market uh, insights, uh, for example, which countries are producers of crude oil, which countries are consumers of crude oils, reserves, prices, distribution, logistics, which ones are petrochemical industries, which ones are more into petroleum refinery, and so on. Then we continue with section number three, which is crude oils. As the name implies we're going to cover crude oils a little bit more into the physical properties and chemical properties as well. This is very important because uh, this is going to be dictating our refinery. So depending on your refinery, or let's say depending on your crude oil, you're going to have your refinery. So in the crude oils, we're going to see, let's say, viscosity, sulfur content, uh, where do we get them from, what's typical aspects, why do we want to avoid uh, high sulfur content, and so on. Then we go to products. As the name implies, these are products of the refinery probably you're imagining uh, gasoline, diesel, but I am also going to include products of each individual unit operation. For instance, where we get uh, NAFTA or straight run NAFTA, we get it from CDU or crude oil distillation unit. Where do we get hydro treated light NAFTA? From the hydro treaters. Where do we get FCC gasoline? From the FCC and so on. So actually we're going to cover plenty of products inside the same refinery. For instance, probably you don't know it right now, but isomerization unit will be producing isomers which are later added to gasoline. So technically these are gasoline components. Catalytic reforming is going to form the reformate, which is then added to the gasoline. So technically you don't buy reformate, you buy the gasoline blend. Then we continue with the unit operations, which in my opinion, crude uh, distillation unit atmospheric conditions and vacuum distillation units are the most important ones because those are actually obtaining all the crude oils cuts. So let's say that it, the fractionation, initial fractionation goes. So if you don't understand how it is uh, fractionated, then it's going to be kind of hard to understand it here in these specific units. So very important guys, CDU and VDU to pay attention to. Then we continue with hydro treatment, which is removal of sulfur and other things. Gas processing, mostly for gases obtained in the refinery, LPG, butanes, propanes, and all other materials. Maybe C1, C2, which are later going to be used as fuel gases. Then we go to the polymerization unit, which as the name implies, produces polymer, which actually is used later into polymer gasoline. Isomerization unit is going to be isomerizing some of the, let's say, not so interesting alkanes or paraffins into a much more interesting isomer for gasoline, which increases octane rating. Alkylation unit, as the name implies, alkylation is going to cure. So 
the alkylate is going to increase in quality. Then add it to the gasoline blending pool. Platelytic reforming, we're going to cover most of the chemistry here, the summarization as well, alkylation, but catalytic reforming, and uh, where is it? FCC covers a little bit on the chemistry behind these operations. All of them have some chemistry, but these are the important ones because these contain catalysts. We want to know the operations, temperature, pressures, feed rates, and more importantly, type of catalyst being used. Hydrocracking, as the name implies, is breaking molecules into shorter chains. Thermal cracking and coking is for the production or the treatment of the residual materials. We want to still get something uh, of value of our residual cuts. And very important, secondary processes, which maybe are not related to refinery per se, but without these, the process of refinery will not be possible. And the final conclusion.